What's going on guys? Welcome to my episode 4 of season 5 of the Flash review video. Now, not really much happened in this episode, in my opinion. There's not a lot to talk about. It's going to mostly center around Nora, but I will say that we did find out about Metatech at the end of the episode, so we know that, of course, from this, like, uh, as, as a lot of people call it, flavor of the week kind of character, we found out how new metas are being created, and we learned a little bit more about Cicada, and it seems like he got his powers the night that, you know, freaking Flash and Excess destroyed the satellite. When they exploded that satellite, it looks like technology and things around that explosion have now gained powers from the dark matter that was in the satellite. So we saw how this week's character, which I don't know if they gave her a name because freaking Cisco wasn't there, but I would have called her Headline or something like that or some crap. I don't know what Cisco would have said. But uh, yeah, whatever that character's name was, because I didn't catch it, if you caught it, let me know in the comment section down below. Her phone was basically the meta powers. We saw that when Barry uncovered the, you know, the grab, the, you know, the cover of it. And uh, yeah, that's how she got her powers. And anything she tweeted, apparently, or headline-wise, was how she was able to control people. Which, in my opinion, was kind of a lame power. But, you know, sometimes they just need to make up characters and have characters do kind of weird things. I don't know if that was a real character or not. It was just kind of lame, in my opinion. But yes, anyways, Metatech, and we found out through, you know, Ralph and Sherlock that we, uh, that's basically how Cicada is. Cicada... From, you know, since 37 times prior to this, Cicada's been the same person. This one's different it, because it's changed because of excess blowing up the satellite with Barry. And whatever debris ended up hitting Cicada, or whatever debris happened ended up hitting Cicada and more than likely was a shard of the debris that he's using to, you know, go around taking people's powers. Which is very interesting and it's a, it's a unique concept to bring in new types of metas now, opposed to everybody got injured by the particle accelerator, this one's different to be, you know, just a bit more interesting because you would think after three or four seasons that Barry would have caught a lot of different metas. And this is just kind of like last season where him coming out of the Speed Force and making Dark Matter, that is what caused last year's villains this year's villains are from the satellite. So it, it is, I am liking that Flash is introducing new villains that are not all just created from season one's particle acceleration explosion. Like I said, we also had the Ralph detective thing going on with Sherlock. That was kind of cool. I mean, I like that Sherlock actually gave credit to Ralph. Ralph is actually trying to go out there. You know, he's a little bit discouraged by people making fun of him with the whole pair thing. They, they referenced it again in this episode, but it's cool showing that he's able to carry his weight in the group opposed to just being the jokester he was last year and that he's actually making progress and you know although his you know idea was a little far-fetched with going to find the respirator thing it did put Sherlock on the right track to find out what was going on although I don't know I, I might have missed something but it just seemed kind of weird that Sherlock was able to get so much from that like yeah he changed he did the mask thing he got hurt and he just put two and two together of getting hurt from the particle accelerator I guess that's he's something he learned on the previous Earths that that's how Cicada was created every time. Not too sure, but that is what it seems like he's just using his previous knowledge and kind of like putting the dots to this current world situation. We also quickly found out that Cisco is going to be gone for a little bit, I guess, while he recovers. Hopefully it's not too long, but with them bringing in Ralph and with them bringing in Excess or Nora, I should say, they kind of have to push some characters to the side. I actually really like Cisco, so hopefully he'll be back and he won't be gone too long. But we did find out that he's going to be recovering at his parents' place. It should be gypsies, but whatever. But like I said, not much else was going on in this episode. And everything really centered around Nora. And I don't know how you guys feel about this, but man, oh man, did I think Nora was a bitch in this freaking episode. And I mentioned it in my last review that she's getting on my nerves, but then it seems like she redeems herself. But in this episode, I was just like, no, she's being a little, little brat. And it was just really annoying me. And I think what makes it worse, which again, I've mentioned this in previous reviews, is that I know she's an adult because she's talked about going to college. She's talked about being a CSI in her timeline, but she acts like such a teenage child. And I'm just like, this is annoying me because she's a damn adult acting like a child. And somebody hit me up on Twitter saying, well... I think she's acting that way because she didn't grow up with a father. I don't really believe that because I actually think some people that grow up with only like a single parent 
kind of mature more because they have more responsibilities and stuff like that. And I don't know, I've met some people that didn't grow up with a father and they're no, they don't act like that. I, of course, everybody's different, but I still think she just acts too much like a child and it just throws me off because she's supposed to be an adult. So I kind of wish they would have had her just show up as a teenager. Like even like 18 or 19 would have been more plausible the way she's acting. But it, you know, we just, we found out a lot with her today. So she was super, super just like, bitchy to iris like that whole like oh well she's got three times more subscribers than your website like that comment even the girls in the scene were like oh like that was it's nice like i won't say like the acting's perfect like the acting is really good for nora just the character annoys me i don't hate the actor i don't hate anything like that she's doing a great job because i think that's what the i think that's what cw wants that's what the flash wants they want you to kind of dislike nora because she's just this person that's just like, you know, trying to get her way because she's like this hurt child. So the acting is great. It's just the character is annoying to me. But we saw that today. Like she was definitely hating on Iris. We've been so curious about like, what's the deal? Why doesn't she like Iris? Why does she only care about Barry? And today we finally figured that out. So we found that out when Iris finally confronted her about why she hates her so much after you know freaking the villain of this week tried to hit on her i did actually love that moment where barry's like what's going on and iris is all like that girl's trying to hit on her daughter and she like runs out of the van i really like that because barry was like huh what like he didn't even know what was going on which i thought was hilarious uh side note uh for those of you who don't know because i haven't checked i didn't really care to check but if you've read the comics or you know about the excess character, is she gay in the comics? Don't really know. I'm not too sure if that is something that is comic book accurate or just CW just making a character gay to be gay. I don't really know uh, what was going on there. Don't really care. Just curious because I haven't looked into it. So if you know that information, let me know in the comment section down below. Back to that scene though, we do know why Nora has been so mad at Iris and that is because apparently Iris put a power dampening chip into Nora so she could never use her speed and so for the longest time she didn't know that she was actually a speedster and that turned into this whole thing of Iris saying like how would I do that how could I do that to my daughter Barry's all like you know you probably had a good reason all that jazz and then once Iris I mean not Iris but Nora and Barry start fighting each other we saw that Iris ends up shooting her with a dart and dampening her powers with that and later on in a conversation, she says, now I know why I did that. I don't know what caused me to do it in the future, but whatever it did is I did that for your own protection. Nora gets pissed and then Barry says that he sides with Iris and he's known Iris for so long, he knows whatever she would do is for the good of Nora. And then of course, Nora, like a child, runs out of the room and goes to stay with grandma and grandpa. And uh, yeah, again, Nora just really annoyed me with the way she was acting this episode. I get it. I get it. She has issues, but I don't know. I like, I wish, okay. I don't know how you guys feel about this, uh, but I wish that for one season, for one season of The Flash, we just had no characters that had these crazy issues to where they're like, oh my God, I'm going through this or whatever. And like, I wish everybody was just on point because like, I mean, you could have issues, but Nora's always messing things up, it seems. And like, you know, you know how she is. Like, it, it, we always have that one character that's just learning. Like Ralph was last year, he was learning how to be a hero. This year we have Nora. Like, I want it to be like, you know, Arrow season five, how freaking Prometheus was just ahead of all the whole team and they were like on their game. Like they weren't messing up. They were trying to be perfect, all of that jazz and he was still kicking their ass. Season five of Arrow was amazing because even when the team was on top of their game, Prometheus was better than them. And I just felt like that made, that makes so much more exciting television opposed to having characters that are always bumbling around and messing things up. Uh, so I'm hoping that eventually we get a season where they're just all on top of their game and they still can't beat the villain because I just feel like it makes the villain better and it's just exciting. Sorry, I'm just jumping all over the place, but that's kind of what happens on this channel. But yes, so we see Nora go stay with Papa Joe and all that jazz and we're left with the question on why Iris would dampen Nora's powers. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, she probably just didn't want, you know, her to get sucked into the speed force like Barry and all of that jazz. And I know a lot of people are probably going to assume like, oh, that's why Nora's like, that will, that's what Nora was hiding this whole time. I don't think so. Because let's not forget that at the end of season, I mean season, episode three, Sherlock Holmes was actually, or Sherlock Wells, I should say, questioned Nora's motive for being in this era 
And then, of course, we have the Iris stuff that had like the power dampening chip. I think those things are very separate. I think the Iris dampening power chip thingamabop is by itself. And then Nora's motive, her secret that she's hiding, is separate. I don't think those are together. So I don't know if anybody else is out there has tried to say that. But I don't think those are the same things at all. I still personally think Nora might have some evil motives here. Maybe she could be a villain. Or maybe she could do something in the future that Iris knows about that she wants to dampen her power. So that could kind of lead into maybe she turns into a villain or something. Maybe there's some like evil tendencies in her. And that's why Iris would put a power dampening chip in her so she wouldn't have her daughter become a villain. And I don't know. That would be an interesting storyline. You know, just to have, again, have access, be like, what? I would never do that. And she'd be like, no, I've seen the future. Because, of course, if Barry and Iris just travel to the future like they always do or, you know, go through time and mess up with all these timelines, it's possible that Iris actually saw an excess that was evil. Like, what if that happens in Elseworld, right? Like, in the Elseworld shows an evil excess. That would be very interesting and it would give Iris reason to actually try to dampen her daughter's powers because she doesn't want her to become that. At least that's what I'm thinking. It could totally just be something random. Like that's why they hate each other and that's why she wanted to dampen her powers because she didn't want to lose her. Blah, blah, blah. I hope it's not something lame like that. I hope it's something like, no, I saw that you were evil on another world and I didn't want you to become that or blah, blah, blah. So I don't know. We'll see what happens as the season goes on. Again, season this season of The Flash has been surprisingly good. And I'm um, interested to see where they're going to keep going. But that's all I got for you guys. Let me know your thoughts on this episode in the comment section down below. If you haven't seen any of my other content, do check that out here. Hit that bell to turn on notifications so you, miss, you don't miss any of the videos that get posted here. Also, hit that subscribe button for all things nerdy and geeky on this channel. As always, I am your host, Juicebox. Remember, when you wake up in the morning, ask yourself something. If I have any other dose of juice, see you guys next time.